Master of Japan in manga is without a doubt the most challenging translation I have ever done. And I've done some pretty hard translations, but that one was just incredible. Not only is it dense, but it covers a vast amount of his history, like thousands and thousands of years of history with changing Japanese language, with changing, changing naming conventions. Um, it was just, it was incredible. Uh, and it also took me out of what I mostly know of Japanese history. Like I'm pretty fluent in the Heian period. I'm pretty cognitive of the Edo period. But when you get older than that, when you go back all the way to like Princess Himiko and the Yamatai, um, I didn't know very much about that. I found it really fascinating to find out that most of what we know of that period of history is from Chinese books uh, because Japan did not have a written language. Um, that was something I did know. But I didn't realize that most of that history comes from Chinese scribes basically writing in their book about what this strange land that lived or the, the strange land across the street, the same island that they would have contact with and commerce with. And then they would come home and, and they would write about it, you know, of Princess Empress Himiko, you know, Empress of Wa, friend of Wei. I mean, how amazing is that? So if I had to pick a time of Japanese history to live in, um, you know, I don't, it's a weird answer because there, of course, there's part of me that, you know, I would love to have lived during the Edo period. I think the Edo period would actually be a pretty good time to have lived. I mean, that's when most of what we know as Japan was being defined, right? Most of the things Japanese came from the Edo period, stuff like kabuki, stuff like geisha, I mean, even stuff like sushi, um, all of that came from the Edo period. But I also would have liked to have lived in Japan during the bubble period, the economic miracle um, of the 1980s when Japan was this burgeoning superpower and where everything seemed possible and the country was just going sort of like crazy drunk on its own newfound wealth and soft power and all of that stuff. I mean, I came to Japan after that period was done and gosh, I would have liked to have come just about 20 years earlier to have really seen that in the heyday. So I think if I could pick one, I would go to the bubble period of the economic miracle. So I did these two books for Tadal. I did A History of Japan and Manga. I did Strange Japanese Yokai at the same time. And they're both very different books. They're both very, very different. One is a serious work of history. I mean, A History of Japan and Manga is, you know, it's a crash course, like college level course in Japanese history. It's dense. It's got a lot there. Um, Strange Japanese Yokai, the opposite, it's fun. You know, it is just fun. And it plays with the Yokai and plays with the supernatural um, in a way that I think needs to be done, right? It, yokai aren't all serious all the time. It doesn't have to be study and classification and academia. You are allowed to just have fun with them. And I hope that people like, when reading this, especially A History of Japan and Manga, what I would really like is for manga readers to read that book because there are so many people out there who read manga, who watch anime, um, but they don't really know the history of Japan. They don't really know that much about the country itself. And I think in this one volume, they can learn a lot that will really help you know, just sort of give a platform and give context to a lot of stuff they, they enjoy. And I hope they also pick up Strange Japanese Yokai because, quite frankly, after all the dense reading of a history of Japan and manga, you're going to need a little break and you're going to need to laugh a little bit. And that's where Strange Japanese Yokai is there for you. So, one of my least favorite questions, and the one I'm probably asked the most, is how do you study Japanese? Like, how do you get proficient in Japanese? The reason I hate this question is because I am terrible at studying Japanese. I'm so bad at it. I tried for years to learn how to, to learn Japanese, learn how to speak it, to learn how to read it. Um, and the only way that I know how to really learn Japanese is to move to Japan. That is not practical. I completely understand that that is not practical. Move to Japan, live there. Six years, you'll be great, right? Um, but there's so many resources nowadays. You know, there are great Japanese learning books. There are great Japanese learning apps. I mean, I think that the only real thing you have to do is be persistent, right? Most people that start studying Japanese give up because they'll find that it's not a hill, it's an Everest. And once they realize exactly how much effort they have to put to get in the top of Everest, they peace out. They're like, no, I'm not going to do it. And, th and that's fine, right? That's great to acknowledge for yourself. 
But for those of you who stick with it, for those of you willing to climb Everest, um, and it, it's a question of years, right? It's a question of years of study. It's not months, it's not days, it's not weeks. You are signing on to years of study. Um, and just be persistent, don't give up. So I'm so excited to have both these books, History of Japan and Manga and Strange Japanese Yokai coming up. Um, thrills me. They were a lot of work um, and I'm excited to get them in readers' hands and to hopefully enjoy them as much as I do. Uh, I do have some more stuff coming up. I have one book coming out of Tuttle, one that I wrote myself and didn't translate and it's very exciting. Um, but I don't want to spoil any cool announcement that Tuttle probably has in preparation for it. So um, it's just the kind of book that I would write and that's, that's about the tease that I'll give you. Um, I also have some more Mizuki Shigeru work coming out from Drawn and Quarterly. Um, and I have a few other projects in, but most of them are not quite announced yet. So uh, keep an eye out because I am always working on something. I'm usually booked a good solid year in advance that I'm working on stuff. Um, but the one book that's coming out from Tuttle, it's it's done. I've written it. So right now we're just in what the book design phase. And man, it is going to be so cool. You are, you're going to love it. Mm -hmm.